Now, if you suffer from migraines, you'll know it's when you get a really severe throbbing pain in your head. Typically, you might want to lock yourself away in your room, tell your family to be quiet because you can't bear any sounds and any lights, and you might feel really sick. You've probably got a bucket next to you. And actually, I think people underestimate how devastating migraines can be. In fact, a global study suggested it's the second leading cause of disability. So in this video, I'm going to explain to you a little bit about what migraine is, really importantly, what can be done to try and prevent the migraines in the first place, what treatments are available and so hopefully you'll finish this video feeling a little bit more confident there are lots of things you can do to help with your migraine. So what is migraine? Migraine is a genetic neurological condition that affects one in seven of us so you're not alone it's really common and we think it usually starts in childhood or early adulthood and is caused by abnormal brain activity which affects the chemicals the nerves and the blood vessels in the brain. This may be due to genes passed down from your parents and then aggravated by certain triggers, which I'll go on to talk about. We break down migraine into two different categories. So there's migraine with aura, and this affects about 25% of people. And for these people, they get certain warning signs about an hour or so before the headache comes on. And they may commonly say they get things like zigzags in their vision or flashing lights. They may get tingling in their fingers. They may feel dizzy. Um, they may even have speech difficulties. And it's worth bearing in mind that if you're a woman who has migraine with aura, then you shouldn't be on the combined oral contraceptive pill, which contains estrogen. But for the most part, people just have migraine without aura. We usually diagnose migraine just on your symptoms alone. So we don't normally to need to do any brain scans, but we, we do usually like to examine you. And this is to rule out other causes of your headache. Other headache causes include cluster headache, medication overuse headache and tension type headaches and some people do have more than one of those and then there are certain red flags these are features that would worry us and make us think there could be something serious that needs ruling out and you would need uh, reviewing urgently so if you find that you have um, a headache which is the worst headache you've ever had at the back of your head if it's worse when you bend over or cough if you have a headache with any facial weakness leg or arm weakness and speech difficulties if you have a headache that comes with a fever, neck stiffness, um, and a rash, or if you've had a head injury, all of these things mean you need checking out urgently, please. The stages of migraine. It can be useful to understand what the four stages of migraine are. You might be surprised, but it also might help you understand how you might be able to start managing, preparing for a migraine coming on. So the first stage is called the prodrome, and this can occur 48 hours before your migraine comes on. During this time, you might notice that you become irritable. You might end up yawning a lot, going to the toilet a lot. Your family may pick up on these symptoms and be like, oh, stay out of the way, she's going to get a migraine. Uh, the second stage for 25% of you will be when you have the aura. So as mentioned, these are those sensory symptoms that usually come at about an hour before your migraine. The third stage is the headache itself, which usually lasts hours or days. So if, it, if it's only lasting minutes or it's going on for weeks, it may not be migraine. And the final stage is the post stage, or as we like to call it, the, the hangover stage. And this is the recovery period where generally you're going to feel a bit rubbish for a couple of days. So do take some time out and be prepared that you might feel a bit rubbish and look after yourself. It's all part of the migraine, unfortunately. How to prevent migraine attacks, triggers. So everybody who has migraines will have some triggers that cause their migraines. And it can be different for different people. So this is why we ask you to keep a headache diary. It's actually really important and can be really helpful. I'll include a link into the National Migraine Centre's website where they have a, a headache diary you can download. And what's common is it's not just one trigger that will set off a migraine. Often it's a multitude, one after the other after the other, that creates a th certain threshold that causes that migraine. So I think this is the most important part of the video. So stop what you're doing, pay attention. Pay attention now, people. Um, so here are the most common triggers that you might want to try and do something about to help prevent migraines coming on in the first place. So changes to sleep routine. So this can, one of the most common causes of triggering a migraine. So try and keep to a same routine, even if it means avoiding a late night and a line at the weekend. And then avoid going a long time without eating or drinking. So don't try any intermittent fasting anything like that it's probably not going to be for you if you suffer with migraines and in fact carry some healthy snacks with you all the time maybe some nuts and seeds things like that that you can kind of keep yourself topped up with throughout the day avoid sugar heavy or processed foods and when it comes to caffeine try and stick to a regular amount 
and try and have it just in the morning so if because otherwise it can affect your sleep if you have it later on in the afternoon or evening in terms of exercise exercise is fantastic for migraines it can help release kind of happy endorphins which settle the migraine but don't go for any kind of sudden burst of exercise that you're not really used to so if you don't do loads of exercise then don't suddenly go and do a hit class that probably will trigger a migraine for you hormonal changes now unfortunately for us ladies women do suffer with migraines about three times more than men in children it's the same boys and girls about even stevens until they get to puberty and so this is because we have the hormones which can trigger migraines so often women will find their migraines are worse um, before their period or when they're uh, going through the perimenopausal stage um, so finding ways to settle your hormones can be helpful for migraine triggers stress we know is a big trigger for migraines so try and do anything you can to settle your stress maybe do some yoga some meditation um, even excitement, so there's not too much you can do about that, but that can also trigger uh, a migraine. And finally, head and neck pain. So thinking about your posture, trying to sit well, maybe getting a massage, that can help too. So treatments for an acute migraine attack. I'll discuss first of all a couple not to bother with that might be wasting your time with, and that includes paracetamol. Although a very safe drug and cheap, it doesn't tend to be that effective for migraine and codeine or other opiates like codeine and these can be found in things like migraine relief that you might have tried you can buy from the pharmacy codeine and similar medications actually tend not to be that effective in migraine have got nasty side effects and can actually put you more at risk of getting medication overuse headache so don't bother with that instead what you want to do is have a good dose of ibuprofen or soluble aspirin not everyone can take ibuprofen so do check and with the doses we're thinking about is about 400 600 milligrams of ibuprofen so that's more than it'll say on the packet but what you do need to be careful of is you're not overdosing more than you should within the 24 hours so 400 600 milligrams of ibuprofen and then 900 milligrams of soluble aspirin if you're feeling sick and you can't take any tablets you can have a suppository such as diclofenac and the key to that is taking it as soon as the headache begins so carry it with you in your pocket or in your bag and as soon as you get that headache take those tablets straight away and that can sometimes be enough to nip the migraine in the bud before it develops often people feel quite sick or are sick when they have um, a migraine so we often give anti-sickness medication but actually this is useful even if you're not feeling sick because when you have a migraine your gut doesn't work as well as it should so the anti-sickness medications such as metoclopramide or domperidone can help the absorption of those painkillers and you can even buy one over the counter called Bucastem, which you just put inside your mouth and it absorbs so even if you feel sick so that's a really good one to know about so as fast as you can take the soluble aspirin ibuprofen if you can take it and some anti-sickness medication and that might be enough if it isn't then you can speak to your gp or pharmacist about a triptan medication and these are used for the acute attacks of migraine and that includes sumatriptan and typically we give you two tablets because if one works but then the migraine comes back within 24 hours, you can take the second tablet. And just bear in mind that if the, one of the triptans doesn't work for you, there's about seven different triptans, so you could always try a different one that might work for you. So what about medication to prevent migraines coming on in the first place? Now that sounds like a real winner, doesn't it? If you want migraines, then why do you have to wait until the migraine comes on? But they're not that brilliant, these preventative medications. So the best thing to work on is sorting out your triggers, get that headache diary, and trying to manage with the um, acute medications we've mentioned. But if that's failing and you're still getting migraines, then you could consider talking to your GP about preventative medication. And this includes things like propanolol, um, amitriptyline, and topiramate. Topiramate, worth bearing in mind that um, it's dangerous to get pregnant if you're having topiramate. So speak to your GP and they'll discuss what the best options for you are. It's worth bearing in mind that you do usually need to give about 12 weeks um, before you decide whether or not it's worked. So you have to be a patient to patient when it comes to, the, to trying the preventative medications. So what about alternative treatments for migraine? Well, NICE guidance actually recommends that we could try mindfulness or meditation or CBT. And this can help with sleep and your mood and it can help with the pain as well and coping mechanisms. Um, and we know that when you're having bad sleep and you're feeling very stressed, that makes migraines worse. So that can help all of those things. NICE also recommends acupuncture, which may be available locally to you. And it also recommends you could try riboflavin. This is vitamin B2, but just remember, it can turn your wee bright yellow, but it's nothing to worry about. Other people like to try magnesium citrate. They find that this helps their migraines and it can help them sleep as well. 
some people buy coenzyme Q10, which some studies suggest it's very helpful, but it is quite expensive to buy. Specialist treatment. So you may be losing hope. You've tried these other preventative treatments, these acute treatments, and you're still getting migraines. Well, do not fret because there's still options available. So your GP may be able to refer you to a headache clinic. And they're generally what they want to know is that you've got a headache diary, that we've ruled out medication overuse headache, and you've failed on three of the preventer treatments. And if that's the case, then there may be other treatments available to you. This can include Botox. Not to make you young and beautiful, but Botox into the scalp can help block the pain neurotransmitters that cause migraine. And around about 50% of people find that they have a 50% reduction in the migraine. Not bad at all. Other options, they can do a greater occipital nerve block where they put some uh, steroid injection, which has got a little anaesthetic into it, into the nerves of the scalp, which can help calm the migraines. But the new and exciting kids on the block are the anti-CGRP drugs, and that stands for the calcitonin gene-related peptide. And this is what is thought to trigger migraine attacks. So by blocking the CGRP with these drugs, they can stop the migraines. And the reason that everyone's quite excited about these is they seem to have a really low side effect profile, which lots of other medications don't have, and, but they seem to be really effective. So about 25% of people say they have a huge improvement in their migraines, and about 50% of people say they have a moderate improvement of the migraines, so only about a quarter don't have really much improvement. So I think those odds are good. Um, so it is a bit of a postcode lottery. NICE have approved these for use for the specialist clinics, but whether or not you can get it locally, just investigate. There are some private places where you can pay to have this done as well, such as the National Migraine Centre. Um, so yeah, so I think this is a message of hope. Even if you tried everything else, there's new options available and probably the science will continue to grow. And so don't lose hope. We may be able to get on top of your migraines. So key points I want you to take away from this. First of all, keep a good routine of eating and sleeping and everything else we talked about. Second of all, avoid opiates like codeine and instead try those medications we mentioned. So the soluble aspirin, the ibuprofen if you can take it, um, the diclofenac suppository. And have them with you all the time. So as soon as that headache comes on, you take the medication. Do keep a headache diary. It really will be worth it because it will help you identify what your triggers are. And that might really make a difference to avoiding the migraines in the first place. If you want more information, then I would really recommend the Heads Up podcast, which is run by the National Migraine Centre. In fact, you could, GP can refer you to the National Migraine Centre, or you can refer yourself. It's a charity and doesn't get any funding from the NHS, so they do ask for a donation. But it might be worthwhile if you're feeling a bit stuck. Because I think, remember, there's loads of help available. People used to just have to get on with migraine, and it's, as we know, it's really disabling. So this is a message of hope. There's loads of things you can do to try and help your migraine. I hope you found it helpful and I hope you can continue a little bit more pain-free. Thanks for listening. Take care.